It's fantasy football time, and it's time for our top 10 wide receivers of 2024 right here on What's Your Fantasy. Hey, look. Ruin the dreams under pressure. Peachy be the one to bless ya, but don't test her. The queen reigns supreme. <laughs> you know what I mean? Add the boy Breezy Prince like a king. When the two come together in any weather, they form a bond, stay tight in any measure. So it's my pleasure. The number one team, let the world know what's your fantasy. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to What's Your Fantasy Football Show. This is season two. It's your host, Wayne Breezy, Crystal Peachy B, in the place to be. And we are happy to bring you our preview to the 2024 NFL season for fantasy football. Peachy, how are you doing on this beautiful, beautiful evening? Uh, the evening is beautiful. Spilling a milkshake on my car was not. <laughs> I had to go back to the car wash. Like I literally just washed my car just a couple of days ago and I had to go back to the car wash and run it through and wash it. So, but I'm very, very excited of season two and yes. we are your fantasy experts. So you can ask us anything. And if we don't know it, we know how to find the answer. So we are very, very excited about bringing you this top 10 wide receivers that we have for PPR. I like that you said that. Speaking of like, make sure you go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if this is your first time watching the show. We have plenty of football shows right here. We definitely tend to cater to just about everybody out there. And don't forget, if you want to become a member of the Breezy Bunch crew and support the channel, go ahead and click on that join button and you will become a member of the BB crew. All right, Peachy, let's not waste any time. Fantasy right. football is approaching. We're going to be doing live mock drafts, things like that. We got about four weeks until the NFL season kicks off. Um, we're going to focus this season, I think, on the PPR uh, league, which is points per reception. Mm -hmm. uh, Peachy, would you want to explain a little bit of that to everybody? Because when we give our top 10, that's what we're catering to. So the points per reception is catered towards receptions more than the the general one for fantasy is especially like for your pass catching running backs those are going to be the ones that are going to that you're going to feature in PPR so anything to where the player has their hands on the football I like it points per reception so it definitely can give you more points especially if you have like I said a pass catching back or a receiver that you know um that catches and and runs with it whatever it it doesn't work like the other ones where they have to run like a certain amount of yards before you know they get scored if they if they grab the ball and they catch the ball that's a reception and that helps your PPR so we're very excited about that which is why our wide receivers are all amazing catchers of the football <laughs> great hands right great, great hands. hands what great hands great and hands. points per reception it doesn't yes. matter if it's a wide receiver tight end or running back yeah, you want too, yes. your pass catchers catching the ball why because mm -hmm. you get a point now there are two different types of points per reception leagues there's the half ppr and then there's the full ppr full ppr simply means you get one point every time you catch the ball mm -hmm. so if you like scoring which i like yes, right this is do. the league you're going to want to try to join it's points per reception yep. now the regular scoring breakdown is where you get a point every 10 yards you get a touchdown every mm -hmm. six yards right and so i mean every every you get six points every touchdown excuse yes. me and so points per per reception means you also get an extra point mm -hmm. when you catch the ball so right. if you get 10 catches and you have 100 yards that's 20 points right there and if you got two touchdowns mm -hmm. just add 12 to the 20 oh, you're yeah. looking at a whopping 32 mother freaking points yes you know what i'm saying so this is where it comes in. So we're going to focus on that when we do our position groups. And we'll kick off this week's episode with the top 10 wide receivers. And these are based off of our rankings. There are a bunch of uh, sites out there that does their fantasy. They have people rank. We use for reference fantasy pros. 
and we'll be using their stuff, but we're not following exactly everything that they're saying because we believe that there's going to be a shift in the atmosphere yes. when it comes to these wide receivers. So let me go ahead and pull up this doc, and we're going to have some fun with it. Peachy, just off the top of your head. Okay. Not someone on our list. Okay. Give me a wide receiver that you feel like may creep in to being one of the top 10 wide receivers PPR. Oh, this is easy. And everybody's going to say I'm biased. But go OH, go Buckeyes. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to creep into that top 10. The Cardinals have like already been checking in on him. The Cardinals said he's been the best player at camp. That he's as good as advertised. And I'm actually excited about watching him, except when he plays my Niners and, you know, that sucks. But, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's who I think is going to quickly creep into the top ten, actually. He's going to be their number one target uh, for sure. With so that's a, that's a great what happened one. With what just, you know, um, with what just happened to, um, I can't remember his name. But they I think do he's on have a different team though now. A receiver banged up. No, 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 not uh not Rondell Moore. Oh um who? the one of their receivers is banged up. I can't remember which one it is, but they did say that that was gonna give him more touches. So if, well, we'll see. I mean, gonna creep up in that top ten. I'm telling you, defenses are gonna game plan for him if they that's don't a have point. a full squad. I wonder if you're talking about Michael Wilson. Um, I think that's who I. Um, I think that's who it is. I so think yeah. it's Michael Wilson. He also killed the 49ers last year. All right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I had to pick a top 10, and these aren't sleeper guys. These are guys that could easily, I think, be in the top 10 um, mm -hmm. that aren't in our top 10. I'm going to go with the other Ohio State Buckeye wide receiver, and that's Chris Alave from New Orleans. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, New Orleans. Chris Alave. Chris Olave, he'll be the number one wide receiver. He's continuing to trend upwards. I believe he's coming in off of an injury, though. But yes. once he's full throttle into that offense, Peachy, I think he's going to be, yeah. he could possibly be a top 10 uh, PPR wide receiver by the end of mm -hmm. the season. All right, we got our 10, so we're going to start. Uh, we'll go one through 10 instead of going okay. 10 through one. We're not going to hold no punches here, waste anybody's time. <laughs> Uh, make sure in the comment section you thumbs it up if you agree, mm -hmm. you thumbs it down if you disagree, and right. feel free to leave a comment with your top 10 yes. fantasy PPR wide receivers, mm -hmm. all right? We definitely will look to that and respond. Also, Peachy stated earlier in the show, if you have any questions, yes. go ahead and leave it in the comment section, and we'll get to it. All right. We got Tyreek Hill as the number one PPR yeah. wide receiver. Um why? Why is Tyreek Hill that guy, Peachy, for you? Why Why is he that guy? Because he gets almost every single a touch. He's definitely going to be targeted enough, especially with what they just paid him. <laughs> oh, yeah, he got so, an extension. He got right, an extension. So yes, he did. He got a, a big old extension. So they expect to utilize him a lot so on the Dolphins he is going to be the one that you are going to want to select if you have the opportunity and the blessing enough god to get dang. oh my god <laughs> I'm sorry I'm looking at stats oh yeah. my god because he is he, he's amazing I mean he really is and I hope that in one of my fantasy leagues I'm able to get him but <laughs> peachy this is why he's number one for me. Mm -hmm. All right. He was third in targets with 167. That's mm -hmm. key. Yep. He had 119 receptions. That's tied for second. Yep. So that's 119 points he mm -hmm. put up just off of catching the goddamn ball. Yes. Then he had 1,799 yards. His coach, McDaniel, you kind of shade. You couldn't give him one more yard to round it off to a, just a regular 1,800. <laughs> I'm sure that he asked him the same thing. He was first in yards, so that's 1,800. Let's just say he had 1,800. Yes, of course. Yes. And you get 10 points every 100 yard, right? You get a point every 10 yards. Yes, a point every 10 Just divide yards, that right. number by daggone 10. That's how many points you got, right? I'm telling you. So it's 180 yes. points just off of yards. Yeah. 
And then he had 13 touchdowns, 13, which he was first in. So he was first in touchdowns, Mm -hmm. first in yards, second in receptions, and third in targets. And the only reason why he was probably third in targets is because they got another wide receiver named Jalen Waddle. Mm -hmm. I did not know that Tyreek Hill was a fifth-round pick. I did not know he was a fifth-round pick. I I don't know why I thought he was a first-round pick. He was a fifth-round pick. He was a, well, you know, he was a f- fifth round pick because of behavior. Oh, we'll, we'll he had that. red flags. Yes, he had red flags. That's why it went like that. Okay. So Tyreek Hill, if you disagree, put the thumbs down. If you agree, mm-hmm. hit us with the thumbs up. But it's a no brainer for me. It's Tyreek Hill, which goes to our number two. I'm going to let Peachy introduce number two. Number two is cd lamb <laughs> who plays for the dallas i let her do it because i can't stand the cowboys how boys since we're doing a fantasy show let's let's not be 49er bias cowboys dallas cowboys um and cd is is a problem um cd is not with the team right now but <laughs> it's okay it's okay he will be Contract I'm, sh- negotiations. I'm sure that he will be there week one. So uh, I wish I wish they would not. Right, have him there. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that would be good for us. But CD is one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League, and also in fantasy, he definitely deserves to be right behind Tyreek Hill as far as fantasy goes, because he also gets the lion's share of the targets from his quarterback Dak Prescott. Bingo. Definitely is that. So that's CD. Now he was a first round pick. Okay. Yes. CD was um, a first round pick. Yes. <laughs> so this is so dope. I'm glad we're doing this. First in targets, 179. We just talked about Tyree Kill yeah. at 170 something and he was mm-hmm. third. So 179 targets. So he's going to get the targets. Yeah. He was first in receptions at 135. He lines up in the slot a lot, so he's going to get you easy points just off of the catches. He yeah. was second in yards with mm-hmm. 1,749. Yeah. And then he was third in touchdowns with 12. Now, I, it, you, you can pick him one. You could pick him two. Right. Here's my thing. Whenever I... I play fantasy football, Peachy. I don't know about you, and I don't draft Tyreek Hill. He has monstrous games. Yes. And they're always <laughs> against me. <laughs> and so I'm sorry that I'm going to allow that PTSD to set in. Now, I'm, I'll probably pick him, and he won't play well. But that's okay because he won't be doing damage to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, he will be doing damage to me, you know what I'm saying, if he's not playing well. Yeah. Um, but, Peachy, it's, it's like 1A, 1B. Uh, yeah, and just to brilliant. do our cross reference with fantasy mm-hmm. pros, PG, they got CD Lamb at one and Tyreek Hill two, so we're kind of yeah. right there on the money, like mm-hmm. one and two. We we got our first top two guys. Let's see where we kind of differentiate. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. All right. So we got our first and second. I guess I get to introduce the the third receiver uh, for PPR. So first mm-hmm. is Tyreek Hill. Second is uh, CD Lamb. And I know people are going to slap me and call me Susan because I got Justin Jefferson <laughs> at number three. Here's the cool part. If you're drafting eight, nine, ten, he's going to be available. So you will get a number one wide yes. receiver in the end of the first round. And here's the kicker. Justin Jefferson, if he did not get injured, would have probably been the number one wide receiver in the league, which means he probably would have been the number one wide receiver going into this season. But yes, because of the injury, absolutely. you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because of that injury, Peachy, it, he suffered. But let me tell you what he did. And while I get that, tell me what you love about the boy Jay Jettis. Oh, man. What is not to love about Jettis? Let me tell you, besides having these sure hands, and he can catch from any quarterback that's out there now. It doesn't matter. We know Kirk Cousins is now in Atlanta. And he's got a new quarterback in uh, J.J. McCarthy. And he's also got a quarterback in um, Sam Darnold. So he has the two quarterbacks. And according to what I've heard in camp, he's been doing, like, great. He's been both quarterbacks. He's been catching it. He's got some real sure hands. 
quick feet, um, body movement. I mean, you name it. This dude has it all. Awareness, everything. He's the most complete wide receiver. Very, very smart. Tough in the man. NFL. Yeah. Yes. Most complete wide receiver. He's really the number one wide receiver in the NFL. He okay. can run the routes, all Agreed. the routes, crisp. Um, and like I said, don't let these numbers fool you. He also missed six to seven games last year. Right. So 98 targets. He was tied for 33, 33, 33rd. Mm -hmm. 68 receptions, tied for 31st. But he still put up 1,074 yards, finished 19th. All right. He only had five touchdowns, tied for 28th. Don't let those stat numbers fool you because he missed six to seven games last year. And he was also dealing with the injury when Kirk Cousins was there. And then mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins got hurt. So it's just yeah. a lot. But he still went out there and produced. Peachy gave you the whole rundown on him. He is the real deal. So first or second pick in the draft, if you if if you love Jay Jettas because you know he's been consistent in the mm -hmm. league minus the injury year and you yes. drafted him first second or third you won't be wrong oh of course not <laughs> you won't be wrong i feel like the top three you can go first pick second pick With third either, pick yep doesn't matter what order they go in they're all yeah fantastic all yeah. three of them are fantastic you cannot go wrong with neither one of them 1000 percent pg 1000 percent. let's go on to number four uh and then we'll do three and four on their list amen ross st brown from the detroit lions wow all right you get to introduce this kid amen ross st brown is phenomenal not even been in the league but just to have a cup of coffee and it's already taken the nfl by storm mm. he definitely has become jared goff's best friend so he's been you know one of his main receiver guys he's been out there not to mention amon Ra can also do something that i think that a lot of 49er fans will be familiar with he can line up in the backfield and come come out the same way he is versatile he is very very versatile so they use him in different ways when their running backs were out and they didn't have but like one running back, he lined up in the backfield, played a little bit of that, which also gave him excellent PPR because, you know, he became a pass catching back. I'm telling you that this kid is special and he's just getting started. So I'm very excited about him as far as fantasy goes. Uh, definitely, if you're able to get him, I would definitely make that a high priority also. Very well said. Uh, and if I get, if I may, I'll just read you as a fourth round pick. I, mm -hmm. This is crazy, man. I love yes. these guys that get drafted later and produce. Know. They play. You know why they do so well? It's because they're playing with chips on their shoulder. I'm right. almost at the point where you want to draft receivers in the fourth, fourth round. Yeah. Um, and speaking of that, there's a rookie wide receiver for the New England Patriots named Javon Baker, who was drafted mm. in the fourth round. He may be this year's Amon Ra St. Brown. Uh -oh. All right. 158 Sleeper. targets, right? <laughs> uh, six in the targets, second mm -hmm. in receptions, tied for second in receptions at 119. Mm -hmm. He was third in receiving yards at 1,515. He had 10 touchdowns. All right, so you could see his points will trickle up, especially in the PPR yes. uh, league. Uh, if that's what you're going for, that's the route you're going. You're definitely going to want to pick him up. Uh, now, Fantasy Pros had Amon Ross St. Brown number three on their list. We have him number four on our list. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm scared to tell you where they have Justin Jefferson. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. One, two, three, four. They have Justin Jefferson five, and we have him three okay. on our list. All right. So, look, these are guys, if you're, if you're into... It depends on your draft strategy. Right. If, if you're into drafting receivers, these are four guys you want to get, and you want to get them early. Mm -hmm. All right? You want to get them early. Let's go on to number five. I get the chance to introduce number five. This is the kid from mother freaking Los Angeles who came into the league and snatched the world, like took the world by storm. Yes. No one knew Puka Nakua out of BYU, but Puka Nakua, he comes into the league, and he just lit it up like huh like just literally lit up the league we're talking about this kid 
out of Los Angeles who can catch everything. He runs things on like a straight line. Mm -hmm. Peachy talked about hands. There might not be a better receiver with better hands. Right. And in this pool yeah we talked about justin jefferson sure hands and things like that i didn't even get into drops or how many drops these guys had i'm in ross st brown only had four drops last year too by the way i can't wait to see what puka nakua stats are as i pull them up oh he had a lot of drops last year he had 13 but <laughs> hey i like the kid all right 153 targets uh mm -hmm. tie for oh he was seventh 105 receptions he was eighth 1,486 mm -hmm. yards as a rookie. So yeah. he was fourth in the league with six touchdowns where he finished 27th. Now, yes. I, we may have him too high, but we know, I think you and I know the Rams. How do you feel about Puka Nakua? Why may he be a great pick to pick up early in, in the uh, fantasy football draft? I feel like that Puka is... And to me, it doesn't really matter where anybody else has him at. I like Puka right where he is right there because we play against Puka. So we know Bingo. how he plays. And and uh, Breezy might be right. Like he may have the best, surest hands out of all of these guys because this dude was catching all kinds of of things from all different directions last year. He got quick feet. He can move around. He's big. So... That's he the key. can, yeah. Um, he's a big, so he mm -hmm. kind of defends False. at the same time while he's on offense mm -hmm. and everything. But this kid is a monster, and I'm real excited about him. The only thing that makes me sad is that the 49ers didn't get him because, wow. <laughs> Fifth round pick Woo! again. Fifth yes. round pick late later in the draft. Uh, and as as um, Breezy has already stated about Amon Ra. Puka probably has a chip on his shoulder too. Yeah, those I guys know, are dangerous. Damn. Yeah, that he and he all but said that as a matter of fact that he, you know, that he was looking forward to playing all the teams in the NFL that so that he, he could remind them as to why they didn't take him. And I tell you what, this kid is just getting started as well. And the exciting things laid ahead for him. But he catches everything, so he definitely will be a great PPR receiver. So if you can get him with maybe, you know, your second go around, that would be great because – Round two. You got a round two yes, grade on him. Yes, round okay. two because he's okay. definitely going to be that exciting. And Matthew Stafford already loves this kid. And everybody's watching out for Cooper Cup. And mm. that's why Puka gets the line share of the carry up of the target so i wonder if that'll change a little bit this year because he was the more dominant receiver than cooper cup who was returning from his injury you said you got a, a second round grade on him mm -hmm. i got a first round grade on him this is one of those guys you might want to get at pick 10 pick 9 if you're in that ppr league because you're going to he's going to get the targets why yeah. he lines up in the slot a lot he has a lot of mismatches he's going to get the targets uh it's when he has to line up wide out probably where you start to see a lot of drops or mm -hmm. or things like that but other than yeah. that i think he's their featured guy now opposed to uh cooper cup who used to be their featured guy uh right. and so we'll see how defenses choose to defend them but peachy talked about his size he's kind of big he's he's only six two but he's 205 mm -hmm. it's a big body receiver it's like yes. like a white debo samuel yo like right. he just doesn't run out of the backfield <laughs> And yes. Debo's are looking looking a little slim now, too. By the way, exactly. Yep. He so is. He's trimmed down quite a bit. He's trimmed down quite a bit to be quicker and faster. Mm -hmm. So if you couldn't catch Debo when he was two fifteen, <laughs> you ain't catching him at one eighty five. I can tell you that Ooh. right now. Um, whatever he weighs, he didn't tell us his weight, but <laughs> we got him five here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think it would be safe to say top five, they should be getting drafted in the first round. If they if they, if they made the top five. You will be okay with drafting these guys in the oh, first first yeah, of round. Course, if you now, if they the slip time. like Peach, if they slip, mm -hmm. and you could get them in round two, it's called a steal. Right. <laughs> so, so be on the lookout for your steals. All right, Th those are our top five. They have them ranked eighth on Fantasy Pros. They have them ranked eighth on Fantasy Pros. Okay. All right. Those are our top five receivers, Peachy. We got to get to the bottom five of the 10, uh, which are no slouches. There are right. no slouches in our top 10, oh, no, however no. you look at them. Number six, ha, 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 
my favorite receiver in the league right now, <laughs> Devontae Adams, the OG. You got this one, Peach. Oh, wow. I don't even – there's so many adjectives that you can say about Devontae Adams. I mean, we're talking about catchability. We're talking about evadability. Like, there's so many different words that you can use. Um, quickness. Mm. Shifty. <laughs> he is a killer on – just on the field like he's amazing so definitely for ppr he's definitely your ppr guy he is going to be catching passes from i think aiden o'connell if i'm not mistaken i believe so and he he's already try- proven that he can do it right though. like you know what i mean yeah um he will uh be able to uh, catch passes from from him with no problem it's not jimmy garoppolo it's aiden o'connell so he will actually have a prayer to do that and he might even stay alive anybody yeah. who who watched receiver <laughs> there were some guys trying to get him a little get him get him jimmy garoppolo unfortunately is with los angeles now uh he's struggling out there mm-hmm. but you know that's a good thing for Devonte adams yes, so you're, so you're right is. uh the six one two fifteen. As he's mm-hmm. big kid, big guy, you know, big guy, six one two fifteen, solid. That's what makes I think having these big body frames makes these mm-hmm. receivers that much more dangerous. I did not know he was a four five six, four five receiver. He don't play four five. He play like he run. His routes are so crisp that they it really doesn't are. look like it looks like he runs way faster than what his forty speed is. Yeah, um, because he's getting yeah. open down the field and he's leaving somebody. But let's talk about what he did in 2023. Yep. He was second in targets in the NFL with 171. He was tied for ninth with 103 receptions. Pete, you already told us why. Jimmy Garoppolo. All right. And then the switch <laughs> off between him and Aiden O'Connell. Uh, 1,144 yards, 15th. Mm-hmm. And he finished with eight touchdowns, tied for seventh with eight touchdowns. Yes. They have him ranked. We have him ranked sixth. They have him ranked tenth uh, on Fantasy wow. Pros. I don't know how you pass up on Devontae Adams. I don't either. Um, but I understand if you don't believe in the Raiders system. But you got to right. remember their coach is different. Um, yes. He he lit a spark in them. They're going to be able to run the ball. I think Zamir White might be my sleeper running back. I don't know Uh-oh. yet. Mm, I don't That's know. a good one. We, ain't into, uh, we jumping ahead. We jumping yeah. ahead. But uh, those are good things to keep in mind, though. Because I'm just saying, Josh Jacobs is out. It's not Josh McDaniels anymore, guys. It's, no. It's, it's, I don't know um, who their offensive coordinator is, but I know their head coach is going to be fierce. Somebody better. And I've heard that, that they're, <laughs> they're looking pretty good there. She said it's somebody better. Uh, somebody better. That's all it needs to be. <laughs> somebody <so> better. <laughs> if you're in my league, right? If you if you're in my league, please. I, and I may do a nitty gritty Niners league for the fans. Oh, that would be wonderful. Free, like I do like a that. free nitty niner nitty nitty gritty Niners mm-hmm. league for the fans, I Yahoo like or something like that. I think I we'll like do that. that. Good idea. He, and we'll do maybe twelve teams. Twelve. Yeah. Fourteen. I hate it. 12 teams max <laughs> two spots are already going to be two to four spots probably will be taken up by the crew so yeah. that means maybe we'll do 14 and then and then the 10 and then 10 will be open yeah. to the public we'll, like we'll do 14 that's going to be tough mm-hmm. but here's the thing <laughs> uh please don't draft him in my league because i will scoop his ass up because nine times out of ten i'm going to be drafting 13th or 14th like so you leave him down there that's if just you want how to. it goes for just some how reason. it goes it's just how it goes it's just how it goes. All right, that's our number six. Number seven, Jamar Chase. And I bet you a lot of people were being like, why do we have him so low? Um, I don't know. I got I to gotta present this one? Yes. Damn. Listen, I like Jamar Chase. I'm a, there, there are certain receivers that I just find myself clinging to coming out of schools. Ohio State receivers. LSU receivers. It's something about these guys that I just cling to. Uh, Jamar Chase is a problem. Like, so don't get it twisted. He's a reception god. Um, I just don't know how well if if Joe Burrow isn't playing, his his play will decline. Now, I'm not saying Joe Burrow will get injured or anything like that. That's not what I'm asking for or wishing for. 
We just know that that's the history. So if right. his number one quarterback isn't in there, mm -hmm. unfortunately, his play takes a big yes, dip. And I don't know if I want to risk that. I don't know if you should risk that. But at the end of the day, he's a top 10 receiver on our countdown. Absolutely. And, and it's because he is Jamar Chase. Like the kid is freaking phenomenal, right? Yes, absolutely. Joe Burrow, I mean, Breezy's literally not wrong. Every year he's been in the NFL, something has happened. Just going back to his rookie season. Damn, so it, that's right. So every single year that he's been in, you know, uh, football gods just haven't smiled on him. So, and he's right. Whenever Burrow is not the quarterback, then Chase is is not the same. He's not the same. I I had Chase <laughs> on mine. I stashed him. I have him to start off on one of my keeper leagues. I have him. I'm excited about it. Oh, but he's I a top player, what, PG. He's a top player. I'm literally like trying to burn incense and candles and everything. <laughs> you got else. the sage going in the background. The sage to Let try to keep, 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 keep him up Burrow right. Healthy. Come on now. <laughs> keep him upright. Because if Burrow's upright and Chase is is dynamite. <laughs> So here's what makes him a lot more dangerous than some of the other guys. And again, mm -hmm. it comes down to his production. But Peachy mentioned about a different receiver that will line up out of the backfield like Amaran St. Brown. This is where Jamar Chase will come in, too. He will yes. line up in the backfield. He will run end of rounds. He will do run plays. That's mm -hmm. extra yards. You might not get the point because it's not a reception. But if you get 10 yards, it's a point. Like, and exactly. so the more rushing yeah. yards you get, that's a bonus mm -hmm. for you. That's um right. He did finish 11th in targets with 141, 11th in receptions at 100, uh, 12th in yards at 1,016, uh, 1,216, and then he finished mm -hmm. 17th in touchdowns with seven touchdowns. Mm -hmm. All right. I talked about him rushing as well, which were in the negative because he only had uh, three carries, but they will try to find a way to utilize him. When they're at full strength and T. Higgins and those guys are out there on that mm -hmm. football field, they are dynamic. When Joe Burrow is healthy, he is dynamic. So the reason why we have him ranked a little bit lower isn't because of him. It's more because will his supporting cast, mainly his quarterback, be available if his quarterback is there he might be a top five wide receiver right and exactly. guess where they have him ranked they have him ranked fourth okay on fantasy pros they have him ranked fourth we have him ranked what seventh mm -hmm. they have him ranked fourth all right so let's go ahead and get down to the get down we got a few more to go three to be exact oh pg how ironic is it that you land on <laughs> The San Francisco 49er <laughs> wide receiver, Brandon Ayuk. All right, go ahead and get it in. Woo. Okay. So let's see. Where do I start? This kid is dynamic. He has been dynamic ever since he came to the 49ers and graced us with his big hands, long arms, <laughs> able to catch anything to beat almost every single DB that would even try <laughs> to 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 try to try to um knock the ball away from him he has proved that over and over and over again uh he's brock purdy's best friend out there on the field like it that's brock purdy's security blanket i never thought since back in the day with um you know like steve young and and jerry rice that I would ever say that again, because all the 49er quarterbacks that we've had, almost a tight end has been their best friend since then. So the fact that I can actually say that my quarterback's best friend is Ayuk and his sure target that he tries to get to as much as possible. He's, he's amazing. His blocking skills are otherworldly. I mean, the kid is just dynamic and special and i hope for anyone that's drafting him in fantasy that you're gonna be drafting Ayuk, um and he'll still be with the 49ers <laughs> well i I, hope I, so. I i i i yeah yeah uh i i agree uh, i hope he will be there but i i tell you what i i tell you what it doesn't matter where he goes he's right. going to be dynamic on the football absolutely field. yes Okay, so, you know, point. like, no matter where he goes, he's going to be dynamic on the mother freaking football field. So, 
with that being said, you know, however you you deem fit, you, you you're gonna want to pick him up. Yes. All right, you're gonna want to pick up Brandon Ayuk. Now I know, um, like I'm gonna read you his stats. I'm in the midst of making an executive decision without like like Peachy because I just realized something <laughs> here, um, <laughs> and so I am on. I'm working. All right, I'm working back all here. Right. So y'all gonna have to let me work. Okay. All right, and so as I continue to work and mm-hmm. get this fixed up, all right, and then I got to do some reshifting around. Brandon Ayuk is 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 dynamic now if there are issues with brandon on you because i'm going to go through his receptions and stuff like that and i think it's only fair um to go through his receptions and and you know and kind of read because i know a lot of people we talked about this being a ppr league and brandon Ayuk doesn't get a lot of the receptions all right he is not a main number one target in san francisco so a lot of people are like well why would i go with him well he had 101 targets which was 31st in the nfl which is second to last okay uh he only had 75 receptions which he tied for 24th but he did finish seventh in yards at 1342 and he finished uh 17th in touchdowns with seven so um whether they sign him or not i can see i mean if he can catch more of those targets if he's getting 101 targets and he can pull in i would say five to ten more of those hundred targets he's looking mm-hmm. at 80 receptions that's a pretty decent number it's still low but it's pretty decent uh and brandon Ayuk will get you points now he's had a lot of big games in fantasy last week and he helped people win leagues last year so yes. It's up to you. If you choose, this is a guy. This is not a fan favorite. We feel like Brandon Ayuk will be utilized in that 49ers offense. And I tell you what, if he's traded, you better draft him because those targets are going up to 170, 180. And he's probably going to finish with 150 receptions. So, like, either way, you're going to want to pick Brandon Ayuk up, 49er or not. All right, 49er or not. Now, I had to make an executive decision right here pg because i'm looking at our list and i don't know what kind of brain fart we was having when we created this list a week ago but i don't see somebody on this list uh and i was like wait a minute how is he not on this list but i know we talked about him but i don't know how he didn't make our top 10 list so i'm making an executive decision okay. all right i'll talk about that in a second but brandon mm-hmm. iu is ranked uh, for fantasy pros, one for PPR, two for PPR, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteenth. So he's fourteenth. So we got him way up there, six spots higher than where he is in fantasy pros. In the meantime, we get my slides back going because when you see this next slide, PG, you're gonna understand why I made the executive decision. Oh wow. People going to get mad because A.J. Brown might not be higher, but he may wow. go higher than Brandon Ayuk. You could, you, we could, you could toggle that. You can go eight or nine here. We got him right. nine. We could put him eight if you want. Uh, let yeah. us know what you if you agree. Thumbs up on the Brandon Ayuk. Thumbs right. down. And then let us know if, if we should move uh, A.J. Brown up, you know, on this list. But mm-hmm. let's talk about A.J. Brown. You get to talk about him. I'll get his stats pulled up. Wow. So... A.J. Brown is like one of my favorite wide receivers in the National Football League. He's Ole just Miss. dominant. He's big. He's just like got sure hands. He's also very tough. He's very broad. And he can do it all for Philly. That was a great move that Philly made. My son's an Eagles fan, so he was over the moon excited. Whenever (laughs) the Titans were dumb enough (laughs) to let him go to Philly. So let me tell you, this dude is, is so, so special. He is also a lot quicker than people think that he actually is. I think that might be one of the most deceiving things about him is when he runs, like how, how fast he runs. He's a problem. He is just a massive human. <laughs> it's really crazy is. because he's only 6'1", but he's 226 yeah. pounds. Like, he yeah, might not be 226 he's... now, but like, dang, like that's, that's a big yeah. dude. You can I'm tell the difference you. between <laughs> yes. big receivers and mm-hmm. little receivers. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? You could tell the difference. Yeah. 
It's crazy. 152 targets, 106 receptions. He was eighth in targets, seventh in receptions, fifth in receiving yards with 1,456, and tied with Brandon Ayuk with seven touchdowns at 17th. Like, so I don't feel like we did him a big disservice putting him behind Brandon Ayuk, but in the PPR league, he did have more receptions. He had Mm -hmm. 20-something more receptions than Brandon Ayuk. So if you want to switch them around, and if you want to switch him, Ayuk, the six, the six, seven, the seventh, eighth, and ninth spots, the Jamar Chase, mm-hmm. uh, AJ Brown. If you want to switch those guys, put Ayuk at nine. I get it. I totally get it. Um, but I think AJ Brown has to be in your top ten. Yeah. Um, this dude finished, uh, I believe, sixth on Fantasy Pros top ten list. Uh, we have them three spots below. Again, I think they might be interchangeable. If we went back and reworked it, we may right. just do that. Thank but you. as long as you got him in your top 10, mm-hmm. he's one of those guys. Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, don't miss out on them. Oh. They are sure going to produce. Okay. Now, remember last year, A.J. Brown had some issues with the Eagles, and he just, like, stopped playing. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> I don't expect that to happen no. uh, this year. They weren't throwing him the ball. He was getting pissed. Right. Him and yeah. uh, his quarterback yeah. was about to fight, and yeah. I love it. I love when the Eagles uh, fight their, Eagles. So their their whole offensive coaching staff has changed. Ah. So that definitely, I believe, is, is going to benefit A.J. a lot. I know that I've heard their coach say that they definitely kept A.J. in mind as well. So this, this offensive coordinator that they had before was just, I didn't recognize the way Philly was playing. So okay. now that they're going to, um, now that they have um, Kellen Moore that was with Dallas, then he's going to, he he's already, the guys are already having fun and feeling a lot more comfortable. Even, you know, uh, Jalen Hurts looks more comfortable out there. So I felt a lot of targets coming for AJ. I think AJ could have a big year in Philly this year. All right. Then you have a number 10. People might be sleeping on this kid. DJ Moore in Chicago, Chi Town. I love him. Uh, he saved me yours. many weeks. <laughs> yeah. Don't sleep on this young, right. small cat mm-hmm. because he too can get up on that backfield and run. Yeah. Uh, he's also a dynamic weapon down the field. And now he has a new quarterback, and I understand his quarterback's a rookie. Oh, well, okay. But I feel like he's a big-time playmaker. Uh, Again, he had four rushes uh, for 21 yards, so that's two points right there. He also had a rushing touchdown, so that's six points. So he's going to get you some bonus points. Mm -hmm. That's why he crept up into my top ten, even though, you know, even though <laughs> Fantasy Pros is like, oh, hell no. <laughs> they got to rank and 32nd overall A lot of people out in the comments are probably going to be like, hell no. Nah, y'all sleeping on it. That's why y'all lose. I came I, 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 I came in second place. All right? Y'all got to understand. I know yeah. what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Right? Listen, 132 targets. He was tied for 15th. 96 receptions. He was 12th. He was 6th in yards. 1,634. He had more yards than Brandon Ayuk. About, it looked like 19 more. And he also had an extra touchdown receiving than Brandon Ayuk mm-hmm. as well if you're a 49er fan. So I'm just putting that out there. He tied for 7th. DJ Moore is some, the one you don't want to sleep on. He's 5'11". He's little. He's 2'10". He runs a 4'5". He gets open out there on the football field and i think he has a big time quarterback uh and caleb williams caleb williams specialty is extended plays and he gets open on extended plays so pay attention to that they also got him some help they drafted roman dunze who's probably going to take the top off down the field then they got kendall uh uh not kendall um um the kid from the chargers keenan allen right Mm -hmm. they got a nice receiving core he probably will work the sticks more run those intermediate routes down the field and Mm -hmm. then you get the deep routes from roman dunze so i can see this this kid having a really good productive year dj moore so let's recap our 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 top 10 um dj moore at 10 aj brown at nine brandon Ayuk at eight jamar chase at seven Devontae adams at six puka nukua at five Almond Ross St. Brown at four, Justin Jefferson at three, CD Lamb at two, and the number one wide receiver going into fantasy football 2024, Tyreek Hill from the Miami 
Dolphins, from the Miami Dolphins. Ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all so much for tuning in to episode one of season two. What's your fantasy football? We're your host, Wayne Breezy, Peachy B. We'll see you back here next week. We're going to be talking about those running backs because you got to get your running backs, baby. All right, until next week, we out. Peace. Hey, look. Ruin the dreams under pressure. Peachy be the one to bless ya, but don't test her. The queen reigns supreme. <laughs> you know what I mean? Add the boy Breezy Prince like a king. When the two come together in any weather, they form a bond, stay tight in any measure. So it's my pleasure. The number one team. Let the world know what's your fantasy.